Hello world, welcome to Tech Blog, and you are viewing Linux tutorial series Beginner to Advance Basic to In-Depth Concept. Well in previous lecture we covered what is Linux and its evolution, and today's agenda is, concept of CLI and GUI, selection of your distro, installation and virtual environment setup. Let's go and discuss about what is CLI and GUI, well CLI stands for Command Line Interface. CLI is also called Command Language Interpreter, Console User Interface or Character User Interface blah blah. It allows the users to enter commands to the terminal to perform the task. When the user enters a command and presses Enter key, the terminal or the shell will interpret that command and will display the response back to the terminal. Likewise, the user can communicate with the operating system. And the main difference between GUI and CLI is that the graphical user interface, GUI, allows the user to interact with the system using graphical elements such as windows, icons, menus while the command line interface, CLI, allows the user to interact with the system using commands. When you working as a DevOps professional or as a Linux expert or Linux engineer for server administration, CLI carries a key role to you. Because server versions come with a minimal footprint of disk image with kernel and very few utility tools. And there is no other alternate to operate your server except CLI, I mean command line interface. And minimal footprint is necessary because of optimum performance of your server, reducing unnecessary package and application which may consuming your resources like RAM, CPU, disk space etc. Remember that the Linux OS is primarily used for server computer, mainframe computer and super computer to serve the server application. If I talk about GUI, later on Linux community was released desktop version for personal uses to replace Windows and Mac OS. And there are many distros available now to replace Windows and Mac, and from them Ubuntu is the most widely popular nowadays. People often says that the Mac OS and Linux is similar, is it, really? I am going to say technically no, they are quite similar because both are inherited from Unix. Mac OS is based on a BSD codebase, BSD stands for Berkeley Software Distribution, while Linux is an independent development of a Unix system. This means that these systems are similar, but not binary compatible. Moreover, we can say both of them are incredibly close to their grandfather Unix, you can effectively learn 90% of both OS X and Linux systems by just studying Unix. now comes on selection of distro. Choosing of distro completely depends on the purpose of the job you intended for. For example, if you want to set up a web server then the distro names will come first. Red Hat, CentOS, Ubuntu, Debian and SUSE. If you want to set up customized router for your network then there are PF Sansa, Zentile, IP Fire etc. If you want to work with cybersecurity and ethical hacking then there are Kali Linux, Blackbox, Parrot OS and many more. If you want to set up your data center or virtual environment then there are Proxmox, Zine Project etc. If you want to use with personal computers for home and office purpose then there are Ubuntu, Linux Mint, KDE, Elementary OS, Fedora etc. More specifically if you want to use your desktop for education purpose there is Ubuntu made for you. If you are musician, graphics designer, photographer then you can choose Ubuntu Studio, AV Linux etc. So, there are endless possibilities with Linux. You can choose your distro as per your requirement and need. Now move on virtual environment setup and installation. First open up a web browser, I am opening Google Chrome and search for Oracle VirtualBox, open up the first link from search result. Click on download VirtualBox 6.1 after that choose your platform. I am going to choose Windows version. Select download folder and hit save button. As you see here, I had downloaded the VirtualBox EXE file, just double click to open up the file and follow the installer just hit finish button to complete the installation.
Here we go and running VirtualBox now. You can find tools at welcome screen, and from the network section you could add multiple networks for your virtual environment. Now go to machine menu and click on new option or press Ctrl and N key for keyboard, it will open up a wedge for you. From here put your virtual machine name, storage location, type of OS etc. You have noticed that when I type to Ubuntu it's automatically changed to Linux. Now specify RAM for your virtual machine by dragging the ruler here. Or you could put directly into box aside. Click on next button to create virtual hard disk for your VM. You could also link an existing virtual disk if you have. ID didn't have any existing virtual disk so. I choose create a virtual disk now, and hit create button. From the next window you could choose a type of disk file. Let is default and click on next button. Form here you could choose dynamic allocation otherwise it's consuming amount of space that you specify for your VM, fixed size is faster but consuming a dedicated space. So, let it default and hit next button. Here you have to set your virtual disk size. I am going to set it 40 gigabytes for me, then click on create button. Well, you can see here my VM is ready now. Go to setting icon and then click on storage and from there select optical drive. And then click of choose to create a virtual optical disk. Click on plus button and I am looking for my Ubuntu image file. And here it is, select the file and click on open button. And then click on choose button and finally click on ok button. And now it's time to start your VM. So, hit on start button to boot up your VM. You can see that, my Ubuntu installer loading now, it will take little bit time to check all necessary files. Well, now my installer window comes up. Ubuntu has a facility of live CD, means you can try it without installing into your hard drive. But we are gonna install it directly, so click on install Ubuntu. In the next window, you have been asking for to select a keyboard layout, if you have different keyboard layout then choose form the list else let it default as English US. And click on continue button. And from this window you have been asked for normal installation or minimal installation, well, Normal installation include all necessary software that a personal computer requires, like office, web browser, media player, game etc. But if you choose minimal then it will install only browser and few selected utility tools. But you can install later on after installation. Also, there are two checkboxes, one for download updates and other one as third-party software like media encoder, Wi-Fi, graphics driver etc. You need internet connection if you check these options. Go ahead and click on continue button. Here you can select the disk partition, there is two options, if you select first option it will erase the entire disk and install Ubuntu into it. And if you want something else like, install your Ubuntu alongside existing Windows operating system then select the second option and hit continue button. You will find the available disk partition listed here. You have to resize existing Windows partition then you can install. So, as I don't have any existing operating system now, go back and I am gonna select first option.
Finally, click on Continue button to make the partition with ext4 file system. Now, select your time zone according to your place or city, then click on Continue button. In next window you will be asked for user information, just put your user's name and password according yours. I am going to put my username tech blog and then I am going to set my password. And then click on continue button. Now sit back and relax until the installation is completed. It can take a while to complete the installation. So, I am going to pause the video here. Well, installation is close to complete, and now restart the system and wait for boot it up again. Well, as you see here my system booted up and I am going to log into in my system, it will be asking for user password, I am going to give it up and hit enter key. Wow. I am in my brand new Ubuntu system now. So, before doing anything else first I am gonna change my screen resolution, for that jump over the launcher icon and type in settings and open it up. and from display setting change the screen resolution as per yours. And finally, click on keep changes to permanently set your new screen resolution. After that we need to finish few more things, starting off, this is the welcome screen of Ubuntu, that we are shown for the first time. So, first if you want to connect any cloud account in the list you can, it will help you to sync all you stuff like calendar, document, photos in your fingertip. I am going to skip this for now. Second, we have Live Patch window. Live Patch is a mechanism that allows you to update the Linux kernel without having to restart the computer. This is a great feature to have for servers. But for personal computers, this is not necessary. In fact, I would suggest not to use it to avoid any complications later on. Click on Next. Here it asks your permission to collect some analytical data which will be used to improve Ubuntu. Things like your hardware info, the list of software you install, and your approximate location will be collected. Select yes if you want to. No, if you don't want to share your data. I am going to set it yes, because community can get benefit from it. Click on next. Location services. This allows applications to request your exact location. It uses an open and trusted location service to get your location, but I don't personally think that location service on my desktop is useful for me. So, I'll keep it turned off. And click on next. Alright, here we are shown a glimpse of some top applications that we can install but my internet connection is getting down now. So, click on done to finish. Guys. Hope this video helpful to you, do like and share this video, and hit on subs button to get latest update. Tech blog is sign out for now, see you on next lecture. Thank you.